This is our third session on Ephesians 5, 3 through 7. And we want to focus on not even to be named among you and as is proper among saints, but sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness are not even to be named among you as is proper among saints. So, Father, as we focus on this strong rejection of sexual immorality and impurity and covetousness and this explanation as improper among saints, show us afresh what it means to be saints of God. Show us this kind of ethical thinking that Paul has when he speaks of being something being proper or fitting, and grant us to understand this named among us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So when he says something should not even be not even be named among us. So sexual immorality, impurity, covetousness should not even be named. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean these words or references to this immorality and this impurity and this covetousness should never be talked about? Shouldn't be in a sermon, shouldn't be in a lesson, shouldn't be um, spoken from parents to children. There are a couple problems with that. One is that Paul is expressing it right here for the whole church to read. And so it would seem strange that he would say, don't even name it while naming it. But a second thought is that this as here may be a helpful qualifier of the not here. It's got two possible meanings, doesn't it? You could say, never mention sexual immorality, impurity, or covetousness among Christians. Never mention them because that's what's proper among saints. So this could be understood as a ground never to name them. Or here's another possibility. I'm inclined to this second one. Don't mention sexual immorality and impurity and covetousness in such a way that it's improper among saints. You see the difference? This as here could mean there is a way to speak of these things among Christians that is improper. Don't do that. And there's a way, and Paul's modeling it right here in verse 3, to, to name them without falling prey to the impropriety among saints. So I'm, I'm suggesting that as is proper among saints, is not a ground for the absolute silence about these things, but is an explanation for how they might sometimes carefully be mentioned. And, and what would that be, we should ask? Well, surely, among saints, you wouldn't, you wouldn't use these phrases and refer to these realities approvingly. Second, you wouldn't use these phrases or refer to these realities casually, as though they really didn't even matter very much. They're just part of your ordinary conversation, and when they come up, you talk about them the way you talk about the next meal you're going to have, and thus creating an atmosphere of indifference toward them, which, which leads to my third way of saying it. Um, don't use this kind of language. Don't talk about these things in such a way that they, they lose their shamefulness. I can imagine today, for example, the term 
homosexual marriage or same-sex marriage. Now, I personally think that phrase should not be named among Christians that way. I think it should always have a qualifier in front of it like so-called homosexual marriage. And I think that, I I admit I've lost this battle, okay? (laughs) Hardly anybody agrees with me on this. And endless Christians chatter about homosexual marriage or same-sex marriage, never qualifying it. And I think what that does is, among saints, it has created a situation in which the phrase has become normalized. It has lost its negative factor of sinfulness. And so one of the implications I think here would be, okay, what what is proper among saints? What is proper among saints is to use, is to refer to immorality and sin in such a way that doesn't happen. That this never ceases to be something of a casual conversation, forgetting that it's bringing the wrath of God. It is keeping people from inheriting the kingdom of Christ. If these two realities are in our minds, how could we ever become casual about just naming the sexual immorality and the impurity and the covetousness? So that's my first clarification of this verse in this episode, namely, naming them is a problem, not absolutely but is a problem insofar as saints don't use language improperly, that is, in a way that diminishes the seriousness of the evil of sexual immorality, impurity, and covetousness. If they're going to have to be named, we will name them with a flavor of they keep people out of heaven. They bring down the wrath of God. These should never be talked about or brought into our entertainments. This is another whole area of concern, right? If they're never to be named among us, what about the movies we watch? What about TV? And we say, okay, uh, they shouldn't be watched with a sense that these things are made to be more normal, more acceptable. And that is, in fact, what most movies do. They treat immorality and unbiblical positions constantly in ways that diminish our reaction to them as deadly, bringing down the wrath of God. So that's a first concern. Here's the second issue. What does saints mean here so that something can be improper among Saints. I'm going to take that up next time. I'm I'm looking at the clock here and thinking I was going to cover that in this session, but I think we've gotten far enough with this issue of uh, what is to be named among us that I'll put this off for next time. But let me tell you where we're where we're going next time. There's a whole ethical approach that Paul has, and you see it in the words proper here and out of place here. Isn't that remarkable? So he he doesn't say sexual immorality and impurity and covetousness should not be named among you because they're sinful or because they're against the will of God or because they don't glorify God. He could have said any of those. They're true. But he said it's not fitting. It's not proper. It's not appropriate. He introduces this ethical category of propriety or fitness, the other place to see it is right here. And shamefulness and foolish talk and crude joking, which are out of place, but rather let there be thanksgiving. So there's that same ethical category of proper or fitting, out of place, that is not appropriate, not fitting. And that's so helpful because How many things must we train our children in which don't have clear, precise boundaries of right and wrong? We have to say to them, 
That kind of language is just not fitting. What is foolish talk? What is shamefulness? What is crude joking? What, what is actually impure? And we have to help them see what you're doing there is out of place. It's unfitting. And we must help them get such a sense of what it is to be a Christian that they feel how out of place it is. So that's what we take up next time in probing what is it about the saints that makes this improper or out of place.